So working on antimatter is obviously sounds like science fiction, but actually it's science fact. Eiffel Science travelled to CERN to visit the incredible antimatter factory, where, as the name suggests, scientists produce antiprotons to find out how they're different from regular matter. We spoke to one of its lead researchers to find out more about this incredible facility. My name's Jenny Marshall. I'm a postdoc working with Borges University in the Alpha Collaboration, and I work with antimatter. I did a PhD in Proningen in the Netherlands, and a similar kind of experiment working with lasers and magnetic fields and vacuum systems. But everything is grown up to a massive scale here and for my postdoc. And we really do work with antimatter here. Antimatter is the oppositely charged version of any normal particle. So uh, a proton would have an antimatter particle, which is an antiproton. And so instead of having a positive charge, it would have a negative charge. You also have the obviously charged version of the electron, which is called positron, and obviously it has a positive charge. We first thought about antimatter as a result of an equation, actually. In 1928, Dirac decided to try to understand the uh, motion of an electron at bad relativistic speeds. And he did this by combining quantum theory with uh, special relativity. But when he did this, it came out that he had two possible results. Just like if you have x squared is equal to four, you have two results, it can be either x is equal to two or x is equal to minus two. In this case, you had a case that the, the result could be either um, positively charged electrons or negatively charged electrons. And therefore, you end up with a positron and an electron. We are now in the anti-photon detector hall or the AD hall and the antimatter factory at CERN. Um, this is where we produce antimatter directly and we study it uh, during gravitational measurements and spectroscopy experiments with lasers and microwaves and magnets and all different kinds of techniques are used here to directly study antimatter. But how does the factory produce its antihydrogen? To make antihydrogen, we need two things. We need positrons and antiprotons. And antiprotons are delivered to us, slowed down by two different decelerators at CERN. First, the whole where we're standing now, right beneath us, is a ring of uh, which is called the antiphoton decelerator. And this is the first stage of decelerating the antiphotons. And the newest decelerator at CERN, and actually the newest facility at CERN, is the ELENA experiment directly beneath, behind me. And this ring on slows down the antiprotons even further, so that then they can be delivered to the experiments at much lower energy scales. And then what we do in the alpha experiment is we catch those antiprotons in a trap with electric and magnetic fields. And we have then a cold plasma of antiphotons that we cool down with lasers. We then have a positron source, which you can just buy. You can just buy a positron source. And then we end up with a cold plasma of positrons and a cold plasma of antiprotons, which we can then combine in a two-stage interaction so firstly, you lose some more of the energy of the antiprotons, and then you end up combining them to make anti-hydrogen with one antiproton and one positron. We often talk about particle accelerators because we smash bits of matter together to find out how they work. So it was funny to hear that there are also decelerators, uh, and we had to see one for ourselves. Here we are in the antiproton decelerator ring itself. So above us is all the massive concrete blocks keeping everybody safe upstairs from the radiation that will be emitted. But during the year when the run is happening, so from May until December this coming year, we actually have antiprotons being decelerated, coming in and from this side and arriving and going round and round and round this ring, decelerating a little bit more each time until they're released and sent upstairs via the ELENA decelerator, and then finally to all the experiments in the 8E hall. The antimatter factory is not a single experiment. Researchers are studying the properties of antimatter in a variety of ways. We have a variety of different experiments here. Some of the experiments are working on creating a beam of antimatter to study it in a beam form, and some of the experiments, like the Alpha Collaboration where I work, we trap the antimatter in a, in a magnetic trap and then we study it directly with lasers and it, or we drop the antimatter to see whether it has the same gravitational effect as normal matter. The base experiment is a super cool experiment here in the AD hall. They actually are very interested in only antiprotons. They're not interested in making antihydrogen, unlike some of the other experiments in the hall. And they keep their antiprotons for 
months, years. It's actually been more than a year and a half since they even tried to take more antiprotons because they've still got 15 antiprotons left for more than 450 days in their traps. But actually, this is kind of the worst place in the world for them to be doing this experiment because we're, uh, AD Hall is full of other experiments doing moving magnets and cranes moving around and people walking and tourists and they want something very quiet, completely noise free. So what do they want to do? They want to take these antiprotons, put them in a trap, load that trap to the back of a van and take the uh, antiprotons to Germany where they will have a completely noise-free environment to, doing, to do their experiment. The factory has had some intriguing results with experiments that nobody had done before. So recently we did an experiment called Alpha-G, which is where we trap anti-hydrogen in a magnetic field, and then we release the magnetic field and we see whether the anti-hydrogen goes up or goes down. And we, what we want to know is we want to see whether it interacts the same way with gravity as normal matter does. And so far it looks like indeed it does. And this was the first time anyone ever measured it. So what we've been working on since then is trying to improve that measurement by reducing the systematic effects and also just getting more anti-hydrogen into the trap and therefore increasing or decreasing our statistical uncertainties as well. So my part of the experiment is designing the laser systems and the setups and building the lasers and getting that laser light from a laser lab, which is actually in a different place to where the experiment is, sending that light over to the experiment and then interacting with the anti-hydrogen itself and then trying to understand what that result means at the end of it. Ultimately, the goal is to understand why the universe is made of matter and not antimatter. So what's different about antimatter at a fundamental level? So if we find a real difference, we dedicate our lives to trying to check if it's real. So far, no one has ever found any differences between matter and antimatter, but we keep looking at smaller and smaller and smaller scales, which is one of the reasons why we have this um, cesium Houghton optical clock that I'm using specifically. And we want to have this advanced metrology set up in order to push the bounds of what can be done with spectroscopy with anti hydrogen because we need to match the most precise spectroscopy in the world that's already been done with regular hydrogen. So this is the gold standard, the spectroscopy that we want to try to match. The antimatter factory will continue to push at the edge of what's known to learn more about antimatter. With the substance soon being sent to other labs as well, the chances of finally unlocking its secrets are higher than ever. And those secrets hold the key to understanding why the universe is the way it is.